Swifters, this is Prof G, and I hope you're ready to continue your quest to become ladies and lords of the Swift UI layout. Because in this lesson, we're going to tackle the divider view. We'll learn how to improve on what Apple gives us with divider by using a rectangle shape. We'll learn how to use the geometry reader to get a device's dimensions so we can set a view to a relative size and not a fixed size. And we'll learn how to get around Swift UI's 10 view limit. iOS royalty awaits your excellency, so let's learn big. So here's where we were after our last lesson. Remember, we have an empty string in a fixed frame size in the middle of the V stack. Press the awesome button and you see the text, you are awesome. Press the great button and you see the text, you are great. And now since we're working with layout topics, let's once again add some default text to the message string just so that we can see something in the text view while we're working. I'll write, when the genius bar needs help, they call you. Now we'll show you another view that you might find useful when designing your user interface. That's the divider view and that can add a thin line either horizontally or vertically. So let's add one before the H stack. And since we're inside of a V stack or vertical stack, this will add a horizontal line. Now notice code completion. It says a visual element that can be used to separate other content. And when we press return and we have open and close parens after this, we see a faint gray line before our H stack where our buttons are. It's a very subtle design element. Now by default, this line fills up the available space, but you could do things like add padding. So if we do a dot padding modifier afterward, we see we pull in the sides of the horizontal line by the default value on either side. Now if you add a divider to an H stack, you get a vertical divider. And just to show this, I'll add a new divider after the spacer between the two buttons in the H stack. Now remember, the spacer is going to move horizontally, but since we've got a divider in an H stack, that's going to create a vertical divider. And that actually almost acts like a spacer too. You can see that this pushes the view up so that it's a lot larger. Now you can also add padding with this divider like we did before. That'll add a little bit of vertical padding. And so now we know about vertical dividers. I'm actually going to delete this divider, but why don't we go back and take a look at some of the options for the horizontal divider we added above. So I'm going to control option click on divider to bring up the attributes inspector we see one of the attributes is frame. So if I wanted to have a specific width for my divider, I could change the width here. So why don't we change it to 150? And even though you can enter a height value, that's not gonna change the height of the line itself. And we take a look over at the right hand side, we have a very thin divider that's 150 points wide. Now, if you find the gray divider is too subtle, you can add a color to the divider. And to do that, we won't use foreground color like we did before. Instead, we use background, not background color, but that still accepts a color, but you don't wanna do what I first did here, which is add a black background after the frame. That turns the entire frame black. So remember, modifier order matters, but I'm just gonna move my background modifier up till just after the divider and that thin black divider is easier to see. If I comment out the background modifier, you can notice the difference. Now you can also draw custom shapes and use those as dividers as well. And Swift UI has a bunch of views that we can use to draw different shapes. We'll use rectangle. We also used rectangle in the last lesson when we set the background color using a Z stack. I'll enter that right between my divider and my H stack. So capital R rectangle, open and close parens afterward. This draws a rectangle. You see it's a black rectangle that fills up the available space. If I wanna change the color, I can use a dot fill modifier. This accepts a color. So why don't we make the color dot indigo? That's a nice subtle blue. And then if you wanna change the dimensions of the rectangle, if you think about, hmm, how might we do this? Oh, we already learned we could use the dot frame modifier. So if we put dot frame underneath, we can set the width. Why don't we set that to 175 comma height colon. We'll set that to four and we get a much thicker divider. We can change the height down to one. We get a thinner divider. So lots of flexibility using shapes. You can create your own dividers using them. That's looking good. Well, right now the divider is a fixed size and it's going to remain that size even if our app runs on a larger device like an iPad. So I'll switch to the iPad now. The divider and rectangle are the same width, but they look much smaller on the bigger iPad. Remember, if you need to adjust the device view, you can use the zoom buttons in the lower right corner. But if we want the dimension to scale according to the available width, for example, to be one third the width of a device or maybe just half the width of the device. Well, to do this, we need to get the width of the device. And how do we do that? Well, in SwiftUI, we have a view called the Geometry Reader. Now, just about everything in SwiftUI is considered a view and Geometry Reader is a view too, but it doesn't display things on screen. It just provides us with access to size and the coordinates of the view that's enclosed inside of it. Now this might be more clear with a demonstration, so follow along. 
Now to get the dimensions of our device, we want to get the dimensions of our outermost view. And in our app, the outermost view is this VStack. So we'll surround the VStack in a geometry reader. And to do that, we want to embed the VStack in a geometry reader. So let's command click on VStack to bring up the quick actions menu. And there's no embed in geometry reader in here. So what we'll do is we'll use this generic embed option. See embed with three dots or ellipsis after it and select that, we can replace the container which shows up here with upper camel case geometry reader, no space in between. And now we'll get an error, and that's because we need to pass in a value into the closure that we can use to read the geometry of the view inside of it. So the error in here says we need a closure argument. If I click on fix, it puts in dash in just to the right of the curly braces. Now the dash means we don't care about the argument. It doesn't even give the argument a name, but we need the argument in here. We want to read the geometry reader information. So I'm going to replace the underscore with the name of a variable that's going to give us access to the geometry reader information. And I'm just going to call this geometry in lowercase. Sometimes you'll see tutorials where people call this just geo or G. You can call it whatever you want, but I think geometry is a good name. So now let's use this geometry variable. We'll go down here into the rectangles frame modifier, and I want to change the fixed width value of 175, and I'm going to use the geometry value to calculate a size relative to the size of the VStacks view, which is also the size of the device. Now, when I start to type in lowercase geometry, code completion says this is a value of type geometry proxy. See that after the colon here? And that type actually has several components that we can get at using code completion. So let's do that. Press return to enter geometry. After geometry, I'll type a dot. Cool, we see size in there as an option, so select that. Then another dot, and we can see that the size value will give us access to width or height. I want width here, so select that. And if we want to set the width of this frame to two thirds of the geometry width, then I just multiply this by two thirds. Multiplication in Swift is just like you'll see in other programming languages or in spreadsheets like Excel. It's the star or asterisk character. I'm going to put this inside of parentheses to make it easier to read. And look at that. The line is now two thirds the width of the device. I can change the two thirds to 0 0.5 to make a line half the width of the device or one third to make the line one third of the device. I'll go back to two thirds, but now look what happens when we go back to the iPhone 13 Pro. The line is two thirds the width of this much smaller device. So we've learned how we can use a geometry reader to get a device's dimensions and use the dimension to set a relative frame size, in this case, the frame width, instead of using a fixed frame width. Nice. So now we know dividers and how to use a rectangle to mimic a divider. I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to remove the geometry reader that surrounds our VStack. Make sure you also delete its closing curly. And I'll make sure that our indentation lines up with Command A to select all and Control I to fix the indents. Looking good. Now I want to show you one last thing. Swift UI currently has a limit of 10 child views in each group. Now a stack might be considered a group. So if we look, we currently have four child views inside of our VStack. Spacer, text, another spacer, and an H stack. And we don't count the children of children inside the count of 10. So the two buttons inside of the H stack don't count. But we also can't have more than 10 views inside of the H stack. And so now to illustrate what happens when we go past the 10 view limit, I'm going to add more views up top. I'm going to add a text view that says, I am a text view. So if that's the first view in the stack, spacer is the second, text is the third, this spacer is the fourth, and the H stack is the fifth. And so now I'm going to copy I'm a text view and I'm going to paste this below. So here's our sixth view, seventh view, eighth view, ninth view, tenth view, no problem. Let's see what happens when we paste one more text view and oh, we get the error. And we see up top, it says fail to build. If I click on this circle, it says extra argument in call. And if I scroll down, I also see the error extra argument in call next to the H stack. And if you were to count down, H stack would actually be the 11th view that's inside of our V stack. So since we can't pass in more than 10 views, the 11th view is where the error shows up. Now only allowing 10 views might seem like a big limitation, but the fix is easy. To get around this, we simply place the views inside of a special Swift UI element called a group. Now that group becomes a singular view added to the count of four views that are already in the VStack. And the views inside the group are children of the group, not the VStack, so we only count the group as one additional VStack view. Now to add a view, I can either type in capital G group with an open and closing curly, or I can add a group the same way that I embedded elements in stacks. I can command click on the first text view that brings up the quick action menu and select group. And this puts the first text view in the group in between its curlies, and I can move all the other text views into the group. The error goes away. This is fine. 
and I can even add up to 10 views inside of the group. Now, of course, when I exceed 10 views inside of a group, I get a similar error, but you continue to nest groups inside of groups if you need to. Nice. Also something to note, if you have modifiers that return a view, you can apply them to the end of the group to impact everything inside of the group. So dot font actually works this way. No encode completion, a font returns a view. So after the group, I can say dot font, and then I can pass in any valid fonts. So I can select a font like title two, and that changes all of the text views in the group to the title two font. And if I remove the two, I can see that it changes all the text views to the title font. Nice. Now I'll try adding the font weight modifier, and this is really interesting to me because in the prior version of Swift UI, font weight returned a text view. So we couldn't use it here since it modifies the group, and the group is just a generic view. But in the last update of Swift UI, font weight returns see here some Swift UI view, so I can apply the modifier here, and it'll change the font weight of everything inside. Nice! And you'll likely notice improvements like this in Swift UI each year. Apple is constantly making refinements, adding more features and better flexibility. So if I enter dot heavy in here, we can see that it modifies the font weight of all of the text views in the group. Nice. And so since we're done demonstrating group, I'm going to highlight group, including its font modifier at the end and delete this. And I'm also going to set my message string back so that it's an empty string. And hopefully your interactive preview shows that everything is working as expected. And Swifter, that concludes another lesson of big learning. We worked with a divider view, creating horizontal and vertical dividers, and we adjusted the size of a divider using the frame modifier and changed the divider's color with the background modifier. We learned Swift UI makes it easy to work with shapes, and we used a rectangle to mimic a divider with even more customization, setting the rectangle's color with dot fill and adjusting the rectangle size with dot frame. We also learned how to use the geometry reader to read a view's dimensions, and we set the rectangle divider to a multiple of the relative width of a view instead of a fixed width. We learned about Swift UI's 10 view limit inside of a view, but we learned how we could use group to get around this limit. And we once again saw that modifiers that return generic view types can be applied to all views inside of a view, and we did that by changing the font and font weight of all of the text views inside of our group. So hopefully after our last few lessons, you're feeling like dukes and duchesses of design, and you've got quite a bit of control over how your app looks. Keep hacking, skilled one.